Olivia Reiner, you're on with Patrick. Go ahead. Hi, Patrick. When did this position first come on your radar and, and why was it an enticing opportunity for you? Hi. Yeah, it's a couple of weeks ago uh, through conversations with uh, with Keith Jones. Um, it popped up on the radar and it's about perfect timing for me and my family. Uh, we live on the East Coast now, uh, close proximity to Philadelphia, um, to Allentown, Lehigh Valley Phantoms facility as well. And uh, the timing was right to, to try something new in my career. Um, I'm excited to uh, join the Flyers hockey operations staff, some management, something that I've been uh, looking forward to uh, for a while. And I uh, just trying to carve uh, the first few years out of retiring from playing the game. And uh, now I'm ready to take the next step. And I'm really excited to join the Flyers. Charlie O'Connor, you're on, Patrick. Go ahead. Hi, Patrick. Uh, you just mentioned about, you know, the proximity to, you know, the Phantoms, Lehigh Valley. Is that going to be a primary focus of yours in terms of, you know, dealing with prospects and helping them? Yeah, I believe it will be. And uh, that's what I'm most excited about today uh, to get involved with is the development process of the Flyers prospects and players, uh, whether that's at the Flyers level, uh, playing with Lehigh Valley or, or prospects that we have playing with their local club teams. Uh, we've got a number of players in New England and on the East Coast that I'll be able to track, um, monitor their seasons and try to help in any way. But uh, that's something that's important to me because it was helpful in my career. I started with the Flyers organization, played parts of three seasons with the Phantoms uh, when they were back in Philadelphia in the same training facility as the big club. And uh, they were really important years for me on the ice as well as off the ice. I grew a lot as a person. I was age 20 to 24, and even though at the time they were challenging years, being in the minors and fighting to get to that next level, I was really thankful for the help of, of head coach John Stevens and Ken Hitchcock and a lot of leadership in the Phantoms room that helped push me to the next level. And I went on to, to do things at the NHL level that when I was experiencing those uh, things, I would look back at my time in Philadelphia and uh, the stepping stone that I used there in the minors. So. I feel like I've got great experience to relate to these players and try to help them on their journey. Follow up, Charlie. Yeah, Patrick, you, you kind of are coming this from, well, I guess not, maybe not compared to Jonesy, but coming at this from a unique perspective where, you know, you were an analyst, you, you watched the NHL pretty closely in that role. You know, as you've watched from afar, the Flyers over the last few years and how they've declined, what have you what what do you believe was the reason why they fallen off and what do you believe needs to happen to get them back to where they want to be? Uh, it's a good question. That's something I'd like to dive into more as I get familiar with the organization. As far as the my broadcasting career, uh, it was it was five years long. I finished playing and it was an opportunity that was presented to me the day that I retired from playing. Um, the next week, I was beside Jonesy at the desk at NBC. I learned a lot from him uh, over the three years uh, alongside him at NBC. Also worked with Turner and NBC Chicago, uh, covering a lot of different things league-wide. Uh, in regards to the Flyers, um, I believe that every winning team starts with a great culture, a great core group of players, and a strong development system. And that's what I'm excited to work with here in Philadelphia is helping some of our young prospects um, take that next step and, and be great flyers down the road. So I'll dive into more as to why and how the flyers are in the situation that they're in, but it's always a competitive group. It's a great hockey market. And I look forward to, to having the flyers get back on top. Jordan Hall, you're on Patrick. Go ahead. Hey, Patrick, thanks for doing this. You mentioned your time in the minors and how things weren't easy early on. You, you were a third round pick, but you ended up winning three Stanley Cups. Do you feel like your story can kind of relate to kids uh, as you deal with player development? Yeah, I do. And um, I it's, it's kind of cool to be joining the Flyers organization at the same time as John LeClaire, uh, another Vermont connection. I went to the University of Vermont for two years, was drafted by the Flyers, of course, Johnny was doing great things uh, with Philadelphia, and, and he's a proud University of Vermont catamount as well. And um, 
to kind of follow in his footsteps was a big thrill for me. But when I left school, I didn't know what was in store for me as far as the professional game. Um, I didn't know if I was going to be a lifetime minor league player. I didn't know if I was going to make the NHL. That was the dream. That was the goal was to play at the NHL level. And uh, I wasn't quite ready at age 20. Uh, I need to learn a lot about living on my own away from the rink. I needed to learn a lot about being a professional, uh, how to compete more consistently. And those are things that I did learn over uh, parts of three seasons, including one full season during the NHL lockout in 2005, when the Phantoms ultimately won the Calder Cup championship. And I look back at my career as a player and, and clearly the three Stanley Cups in Chicago stand out and there's other great moments, but that year in Philadelphia, uh, that deep playoff run, the way that the city got behind us, and just the experiences that I went through individually as a player, challenging myself, um, being competitive throughout four playoff rounds, that, that followed me around through the rest of my career, and it helped me become the player that I later became. So uh, in a long answer, I would say, yeah, that my experience, not only with the Flyers, but most importantly with the Phantoms, is, is something that I'm looking to pass on to our guys now. Gianna Han. You're on, Patrick. Go ahead. Hi, Patrick. Um, I saw you served as an advisor to the University of Vermont. How do you think you can um, pull from that experience? And did that maybe whet your appetite to fulfill a role like this with the Flyers someday? Absolutely, it did. It's um, the three years with television, with NBC, and enjoyed it, learned a lot, and met some great people and was a part of a, a great team there. And in my fourth year of retiring from playing, I hooked back up with the University of Vermont and head coach Todd Woodcroft. He gave me an incredible opportunity to uh, track his team, his players, and help out in any way. He taught me how to uh, watch games online, how to build tape. I had the green light to go to Burlington and be around the group and talk one-on-one -on -one with players. Uh, I did it probably more in year four of retirement. Last year, I was a little bit more involved with the Blackhawks organization, but my experience uh, working with Todd Woodcroft and the University of Vermont prepared me for, for life after broadcasting. And it got me excited about rejoining a team again and, and working in the role that I currently am. So to answer the question, yeah, that was uh, really important for me to go back and be involved with UVM. And I'm gonna draw on those experiences going forward. Brandon Summerman. You're on with Patrick. Go ahead. Hi, Patrick. You didn't really get to fully encompass the full culture of the Flyers, but you, like John Torello, were on the opposite side of that, especially in 2010 when you came here and won the Stanley Cup with Chicago. Did those experience of opposition kind of influence of what the culture you and John, especially being opposites, would like to bring back as an influence, influence role kind of the way? Uh, yeah, I suppose. Um... That was a fun, fun playoff round against the Flyers in the Stanley Cup final. Um, pulled it out there in game six with Kaner scoring the overtime winning goal. Great memories for me personally. Same ice surface that the Phantoms won five years earlier in 2005. So it was a full circle moment for myself. But um, as far as like the culture of a room, uh, it, it comes from the head coach. To me, he's the ultimate leader of the group. And then it's the captain and the leadership group as well that that set the tone. So I'm excited to to see the, the Philadelphia Flyers and, and how they continue to grow going forward. And I'll be happy to be a part of that in any way that I can. OK, we'll take one or two more questions. Julie Robenheimer, you're on with Patrick. Go ahead. Hey, Patrick, uh, in talking to Jonesy, he said that um, both for you and John, that you guys have really just kind of jumped right into this. So my question is, how has this opportunity like really invigorated you and like your passion for the game and sharing that? And what are you most looking forward to really sinking your teeth in here? I'm most excited, Julie, to get back on the ice. Uh, quite honestly, um, I was at the skate zone in Voorhees yesterday. As you can see, I got my Flyers hat on. I got about two duffel bags full of Flyers gear that uh, I'm excited to wear around the house and, and train in and, and go to the games with. Uh, I got a new Flyers stick, orange and black. I got some new gloves. And uh, it's been a while since I've been back on the ice and, and, and working with players in one-on-one -on -one situations or small groups. 
Uh, I'm excited to go to the draft next week and meet the new crop of prospects that Danny and his staff are going to select. Uh, immediately after that, coming back to Philly area to development camp, where I'm going to get a chance to work alongside Riley Armstrong and Nick Schultz and all these great prospects that we've brought into the system, get to know them on a personal level, spend some time with them, jump on the ice, uh, be involved in, in whatever way that I can. That's what I'm most excited about. I enjoyed television. I enjoyed the media side of it. It was a great transition from playing into retired life. And I'm glad that I got to sit with Keith Jones for three years because uh, it's not always easy retiring from hockey. Those, those first few years as a retired pro athlete can be a challenge. And uh, Keith Jones was a great friend and a great mentor for me to help guide me through a difficult point in my life. But uh, I'm excited to get back with the team. I'm excited to get back on the ice. and. The timing of it all works perfect uh, with the fact that my family and I live on the East Coast. I can get to all these facilities uh, much easier than, than traveling all across the country. So I'm, I'm pumped to get back on the ice and, and see what I can do to help this team. All right, that'll uh, do it for today. Patrick, thank you very much for your time this morning. Hey, thanks, guys. Appreciate all the questions.